In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I created the moving picture effect inside of After Effects. You basically take a video and track that into a picture frame using Mocha. Mocha is included with After Effects, which I love because it's such a powerful motion tracker and I use it all the time. So that's what today's video is gonna be about. And now real quick, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community for creative people and those who are curious about learning. With a premium membership, you have access to thousands of classes on topics such as design, photography, and video. I've been learning from multiple classes on topics ranging from cinematography to VFX. A great cinematography class that I've learned a lot from is Ryan Booth's DIY Cinematography, Make Your Video Look Like a Movie. I love seeing how others approach their craft and always take something new away that I apply towards my own work. Right now, if you click the link in the description below, the first 1,000 people will get a free trial of a Skillshare Premium Membership. And then after that, it's less than $10 a month for you to continue using Skillshare to further your learning. So if you're interested in joining Skillshare, make sure to check out that link below and enjoy your free trial. But all right guys, now on with the rest of the video. The footage for this effect, I shot three different clips. The first one was a handheld shot and I moved the camera in on the picture frame. I made sure to use a picture frame with a lot of contrast to it. The picture on this one was white and the outside of the frame was black so it had some good contrasts. This will make it easier to get a clean track from Mocha inside of After Effects. The second shot was locked off on a tripod and it was of me talking to the camera. Since this shot is going to be the part that's inside of the frame, I made sure to shoot it a little bit wider because I'm going to have to crop in on this footage so that it fits inside of the picture frame properly. And the third shot was on a tripod as well and it was just a wide angle of my kitchen. I'm going to use this shot for adding in a reflection. And that's it for the footage, now I'm going to jump into After Effects. Inside of After Effects, I have all three of the clips imported and added the footage of the picture frame to a new composition. First thing I'll do is change the resolution to full quality. This is so Mocha has more information and will help it get a better track. Then I'll select the frame layer, right click, go to Effect, Boris FX Mocha, and select Mocha AE. Then I'll come up right here and open Mocha. Inside of Mocha, the first thing I'll do is set my playhead at a point in my clip where there isn't any motion blur. The more motion blur that your footage has, the more difficult it will be to track. So next, I'll come up and select the Create X-Blind Layer Tool and make a point in each corner of the picture frame. Then after that, I'll just right click and this closes the mask. Next, I can grab this point right here and drag it so that the corners of the mask are pointed and not rounded off. And I'll do this for all four of the corners. After that, I will come down and check this box so that it tracks the perspective of the picture frame too. The perspective of my shot doesn't really change that much, but I like to check it just in case. So now with that done, I can select track forward and let that do its thing. After that's done tracking, I'll bring my playhead back over to start at the point where Mocha first started tracking from and then I'll come here and select track backwards. Now that that's done tracking, I'll push play and watch this back to make sure it got a clean track. Mine looks pretty good, but if yours moved around a bit while it tracked, you can go in and adjust these points to line back up where you need them to be. Then after you make those adjustments, you can just let that track again from that point and it should correct itself. So okay, since my track looks good, Next, I will come here and select Show Surface Tracking Data, and I'll line up each of these four points to the corners of the picture frame. Then that's it with the tracking. Now I can come up here and hit Save, and then close Mocha. Back inside of After Effects, I'll come into the Mocha tab and open up Matte. Then come down and select Create AE Masks. After that, I'll make sure the frame layer is selected and hit M on the keyboard to bring up the mask that was just created. And then I'll change the mode to Subtract. Next, I'll hit F on the keyboard to bring up the mask feather and change that to five. I can also change my resolution back to half quality so everything moves quicker. Now, if I play back what I have so far, you'll see there's a perfect mask inside of the picture frame. So next, what I'll do is grab the footage of me talking to the camera and drop that into my composition underneath the frame layer. Then I'll select the frame layer and go into the Mocha tab and open up the tracking data. I'll select Create Track Data and hit OK then change the export option to corner pin support motion blur and change layer export to the moving picture layer and hit apply export. Now doing that fits the footage into the picture frame but it squeezes it down making it look kind of funny. So to fix that, I'll come over to the effects and type in CC power pin and drag that onto the moving picture layer. 
Then I can take these four points and line them up with the corners of the picture frame. After that, I'll come over and check the unstretched box on the power pin effect and that de-squeezes the footage. Now, that fixed the footage, but it's not scaled or positioned properly. So I will come over to the effects and type in transform and drag that onto the layer. And through this transform effect is where I'll rescale and position my footage to where I want it inside of the picture frame. You wanna use the transform effect for this because the scale and position of the footage itself is keyframed once the corner pin is added from Mocha. And moving the scale and position that way would mess up those keyframes, so you wanna leave those alone. Now since I have a camera move and my footage starts out of focus, I will add the camera lens blur effect to the moving picture layer. I'll go to the beginning of this layer and create a keyframe for the blur radius to start at a point where it matches the rest of the shot. Then I will create another keyframe with the blur radius set to zero once the picture frame is in focus. Now it looks like the footage of me talking is coming into focus at the same time the rest of the footage does. Next, I will add the gradient ramp effect to this layer. I will position the start of the ramp to be a little underneath the middle of the picture frame and will set blend with original to 80%. This helps give it more of a look like some light is hitting glass in front of the footage. After that, I'll go to the point on the moving picture layer right before I start talking and hit Control Shift D to make a split at that point. And then I will rename this first part freeze frame. Then I'll right click that layer, go to time and select freeze frame. Now the beginning of this layer is a freeze frame of me not moving and then once the camera comes in close, the video of me talking starts. This could be a cool effect of like you being frozen in mid-air from jumping, and then it turns into a video of you landing. I think that would be pretty cool. But okay, now the last thing I have to do is add in a reflection. So I'll take the footage that I shot of my kitchen and layer that underneath the picture frame layer and rename this reflection. I'll go back into the Mocha tab on the frame layer and add a corner pin to this reflection. I just need to change layer export to the reflection layer and then hit apply export. And now I'll do the same thing that I did earlier with the power pin effect. Adding that to the reflection layer and adjusting the points to the corners of the frame and selecting unstretch. I will also add the transform effect to this as well and rescale and position it to where I want it inside of the frame. Next, I will change the mode of that reflection layer to screen. If you don't see the mode option here, you can come down and select toggle switches and modes to bring it up. Then I'll make sure I have that layer selected, hit T on the keyboard to bring up the opacity and bring that down to 10%. After that, I will bring my playhead to the beginning of the comp. Then I'll select the freeze frame layer and copy the camera lens blur effect and paste that onto the reflection layer so that that comes into focus along with everything else. Next thing I like to do is drag the reflection layer over to the left one or two frames so that the reflection isn't just stuck to the frame while the camera is moving, because a real reflection would move in the opposite direction from your camera's movement. So this adds some slight movement and makes the reflection look more realistic. The reflection isn't that noticeable, so I think this works. But if you want to have a more accurate movement of the reflection, you can add the transform effect to the reflection layer and keyframe the position to move how you want it. Just pay attention to how the actual reflection moves on the original picture frame footage and match it up to that. And for the last thing, I'll come over and turn on motion blur for the reflection, freeze frame, and moving picture layers. But alright guys, that's it. The effect is done after that. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.